If you're still rocking an Apple Watch Series 2, good for you, you know? I'm happy for you, but you might not get Watch OS 7, sorry. But there's good things that might come out of Watch OS 7 and with the Series 6 dropping later this year that will hopefully make even cheaper. So, let's begin. <laughs> We got some leaks recently from The Verifier, who has a decent track record, so I'm inclined to believe a lot of what they say, but I question the validity of how it impacts Apple's actual products that they release. There's some stuff I believe they test internally and never sees the light of day. And let's just address the big one out of the gate. Touch ID on the Apple Watch. For one, they're saying it could be implemented into the digital crown, which I don't know how I feel about that, because there's already an ECG there, and adding a Touch ID sensor on top of it sounds like it would be even more complicated complex to manufacturing, maybe it's really easy, I don't know, but to me adding Touch ID would make way more sense on the side button, because you could probably enlarge that on the side and cover a lot more of our fingerprint than that tiny digital crown could. Maybe you'd have to, you know, swipe alongside the digital crown in order to get your fingerprint read, but honestly it sounds like it would be super spotty and not work very reliably, and at that point just type in the four digit code, and they're even suggesting that at some point in the future, probably not on the Series 6, but they could build Touch ID into the display of the Apple watch, kind of like how we have ultrasonic fingerprint readers on Android phones right now underneath the display, so that you just kind of press your finger on the screen and unlock the watch that way, which honestly seems like a lot of trouble and a lot of work for Apple to go through to save something that really doesn't take that much time. I don't ever type in the passcode on my Apple watch anymore because I realize it's so much easier and more simple to just put on the watch and then unlock your phone. So even if the watch is locked when you put it on your wrist, as soon as you open your phone with Face ID, the Apple watch suddenly becomes unlocked. So in that way, it's kind of using skin ID, which sounds disturbing, but it's kind of what it is. And it means the Apple Watch is unlocked as long as it's on your wrist. And once it leaves your wrist, yeah, then it will lock again. If there's those few times in the day where you take off your watch and you put it back on and you don't feel like unlocking your phone, then yeah, you enter a four-digit passcode. Like adding fingerprint reader to the display, which I'm sure is expensive, or adding it to the digital crown or side button, more than likely is going to complicate manufacturing. And when you complicate manufacturing, that's typically how how you see a price increase. So would you guys be willing to spend more on an Apple Watch for a fingerprint reader? I don't know, for me at least, that's not a good enough reason. I'm still rocking a Series 4 because I was so underwhelmed by the Series 5. And I don't think the Series 5 is a bad Apple Watch. It's just not, and I don't think the Series 5 is a bad Apple Watch for anyone. It's decently priced and it's got great hardware, but it's just not significantly better enough than my Series 4 for me to warrant the extra price point. So I feel like this could be one of those situations where like the watch comes out and everyone's like, like, eh, do I really need a Touch ID sensor on my watch that I'll use maybe once or twice a day? Not really the same as a smartphone, which you unlock like hundreds of times a day. The watch you put on, it's unlocked, you're done. Maybe if you take it off occasionally, you unlock it four to five times a day, but for the most part, we're, you know, very low numbers. So adding a biometric, I guess, for the sake of security and maybe Apple's just bored at this point and they're like, we don't even know what to add to this thing anymore. Let's just start throwing biometrics on there. I mean, it's no slow feed button, but a guy can dream, right? But there's, of course, small incremental things to expect on the next-gen Apple Watch. Some of these things I read from the verifier, I was like, wait, does it not have already? So for one, Wi-Fi 6 for those people that leave their iPhone on the other end of their mansion, but still want to respond to text messages on their watch via Wi-Fi. Good for you. You'll have even faster Wi-Fi speeds. But they did mention an improved battery, which I was happy to see, and better LTE performance for those of you who use your Apple Watch with cellular connectivity, which I hope you're not using it right now because you know stay inside stay clean but the big feature that's probably going to be like the flagship headline for the series 6 is blood oxygen level monitoring so i talked about this on my last video on the series 6 it's definitely one of those health features that's going to be helpful for people i don't know if it's something everybody's going to use but obviously monitoring blood oxygen levels is fairly important in the medical industry and bringing that to more consumers as the apple watch is the most common watch at this point so many people are buying them just kind of implementing that as a standard feature is a good move and I think we'll benefit from it but yeah I don't know if it's something people are gonna run out and pick up a watch for necessarily and once again for the third year in a row there's rumors that it will have some type of sleep tracking support but I'm still confused on the hardware that is gonna be required to enable sleep tracking maybe they're gonna make the argument that this better improved battery life is required in order for you to do sleep tracking because that's normally when people charge their watch so in time we'll see but watch os 7 is supposed to have a refresh design, which 
I don't think any watch OS has had like a refresh design before. I mean, the biggest refresh was getting rid of the stupid contacts button and going, you know what? That button should not be used for contacts. Let's just make it multitasking. That was like the biggest thing ever back in the day. And now we're like, oh, cool, loud noise alerts. How exciting. That and the cycle tracking, my favorite feature. But but yeah, watch OS 7 is supposed to be some type of fresh user interface design along with improvements to Siri. That's what they're telling us. And any type of improvement to Siri is very much welcome. So please do anything you can with watchOS 7, but it does make me wonder about these reports claiming that the Apple Watch Series 2 will not be getting the latest watchOS, which is kind of surprising because it's not honestly that old, and watchOS 6 goes as far back as the Apple Watch Series 1, so dropping the Series 1 with watchOS 7, that makes sense to me, like, I can get it, it's getting kind of up there in age, but Series 2 seems a little bit drastic, but I guess the CPU is kind of old and dated, and who knows, maybe there's some animations, or this new freshly designed watchOS is so significant that the CPU performance of the Series 2 is just not going to cut it, but honestly, I imagine the changes with watchOS 7 are not going to be so game-changing that you need to go out and buy a new watch, so if you're still rocking a Series 2 or earlier, I think your watch will be okay in the meantime, but yeah, do your best to find a decent deal on a Series 3. They go on sale all the time. I'm sure you could get one at under $200 if you really care about having the latest and greatest watchOS. So that sums up all the leaks we have for today, so let me know what you think of them by hitting me up over on Twitter, joining my Discord. Thank you for watching my bad puns. This is your Apple Sheep here, and I'll see you in the next one.